So we're less than a week away from the 2024 NFL Draft. We also got some big-time updates on Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, J.K. Dobbins, and much more Baltimore Ravens news. So welcome in to another episode of Ravens Reports. It's your guy Noah here with For the Flock. As always, bringing you guys our top five news reports and storylines coming out of our Baltimore Ravens today. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Let's dive into the content, starting with the great news with Zay Flowers. The NFL conducted a investigation on the alleged domestic violence assault um, dispute that had happened in January, whenever the Ravens were actually still in the season uh, in their playoff run. This statement came from the NFL. Following a review, the NFL concluded there was insufficient evidence to support a finding that Zay Flowers engaged in any activity that violated the NFL's personal conduct policy. There will be no action taken by the league. So Zay Flowers is cleared for all football activities. We just saw him at the voluntary offseason workouts with, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry and some of the other really big pieces of the offense. And Zay Flowers, he's going to be that. He's going to be a huge piece of the offense in 2000. And 24. I believe that Zay Flowers, I've said this before, I think he's going to have a 1,200 to 1,400 yard type of second year breakout season. Whenever you add in the production that he had in the playoffs as well, Zay Flowers had a 1,000 yard season as a rookie. And to be quite frank, he could have had an even bigger impact. There was some times where he was open deep. Maybe Lamar Jackson overshot him or, you know, there was a misconnection there. But I highly recommend you have Zay Flowers on your fantasy team. Uh, this upcoming year because he's going to have a big season. Let's talk about the other wide receiver on the Baltimore Ravens, Rashad Bateman. This quote came out today from general manager Eric DaCosta. There's been so much back and forth and uh, feels like there's been a splitting of the fan base on Rashad Bateman. It feels like half the fans love Rashad and think he can be a difference-making impact playmaker for Lamar Jackson like like we saw in 2022 and then there's other fans that just think he's a complete bust and they need to move on so um, let's find some middle ground here let's talk about what Eric DaCosta said in a quote that came out today Eric DaCosta was asked if there's any guys that you feel like can have that big step this year And he said, I'm bullish on Rashad Bateman. He's been hit with injuries, but he's such a talented player. And I'm optimistic that if he can just stay healthy, I think he can be the guy this year. Now, what I want to remind you of in training camp just last year, in 2023, when Rashad came back from his injury, because remember, he didn't have the entire training camp. Lamar Jackson said verbatim, that's wide receiver one right there. Whenever he was asked about Rashad coming back, that's wide receiver one right there. Now, obviously, it did not turn out to be the case with Odell Beckham Jr. and, you know, the emergence of Zay Flowers. But that was Lamar Jackson's mentality and mindset in the view of the talent of Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman is very talented and has flashed major upside. He just had a hard time staying healthy. Similar to the conversation regarding J.K. Dobbins. I believe that if Rashad stays healthy and stayed healthy, that he would have had a monster impact on the offense. Now, that brings me to my next point, because at number three, J.K. Dobbins has officially signed with the Baltimore Chargers, right? No, I'm just kidding. But the L.A. Chargers, they now have offensive coordinator Greg Rome and defensive coordinator Jesse Minter, running back J.K. Dobbins, running back Gus Edwards, fullback Ben Mason, tight end Hayden Hurst, and center Bradley Bozeman, all former Baltimore Ravens. So Tom Pelissero puts out the report here that electric when healthy, Dobbins averages 5.8 yards per carry in his career, is reuniting with Greg Roman, and can hit the market again in March. So he's got a chance to go out there, prove that he can stay healthy for a season, show what he can do, and be productive when healthy. And he's very confident in his ability to do so because he actually just put out um, a a tweet here. He said, you're getting this JK, Bolt fam. And he showed a highlight of him just barreling through tackles and uh, ripping off a big touchdown run against the Bengals. He says, hey, you're getting this guy back. So that poses a question for the Baltimore Ravens running back room because right now we have Derrick Henry as RB1, Justice Hill as RB2, 
And there's not really an RB3 on the roster. You know, Keaton Mitchell, he's on IR with that tragic knee injury that he had. He likely won't be back until later in the season. Uh, so we can't bank on having Keaton Mitchell back. And the Ravens will absolutely roll into the season with at least three running backs on the roster. So what I think they're going to do is roll with Henry, Justice Hill, and a rookie. And then Keaton Mitchell will be absolutely in the mix when he comes back because we saw the impact that he had whenever he was on the field before that injury, man. Multiple 100-yard games on just a few carries. The electric playmaking ability, the vision, uh, excellent, excellent running back, an excellent weapon in this offense. The idea of a healthy Keaton Mitchell and a healthy Derrick Henry and a healthy Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews and the playmakers we have is just very, very exciting for this offense. I, I know the offense was good last year, with Todd Munkin as the first year as the offensive coordinator, but I think it's going to be even better in 2024. And at number four, I want to offer this discussion to you guys because Zay Flowers, he posts a picture of um, of him and Isaiah Likely here. It says, my boy, always right there. And that opened up some, some conversation for Ravens fans uh, with Isaiah Likely. Okay, Isaiah Likely going into his third season as a Baltimore Raven who's going to be eligible for a contract extension. And uh, I saw some Ravens fans saying Zay Flowers and Isaiah Likely are the future, the top weapons here for the Baltimore Ravens, kind of overlooking what Mark Andrews is and has done. I know that Isaiah Likely had a monster impact whenever Mark Andrews went down with injury. Likely was just a guy you had to feed the football with the plays that he was making. But I also don't want us to overlook Mark Andrews. And I just want to ask you guys in the comments section below, how would you feel about an Isaiah Likely extension? Does that mean that you have to move on from Mark Andrews? Can there be a world where you have both of these guys on big contract extensions? I want to know your guys' thoughts about it in the comments section below. And at number five, the Bashadi Foundation, College Track, and the Baltimore Ravens are forming and partnering to create a college track center in Baltimore that will help underserved students get college educations. This center will help students that have never had someone in their family graduate with a bachelor's degree become the first in their family and help underserved communities. The Bashadi Foundation and the Ravens will donate $10 million and the M&T Charitable Foundation will donate $10 million to support students. A long-term commitment from multiple organizations here to help uh, bring education to underserved communities here in Baltimore. Absolutely love it. Just really heartwarming, great stuff to see uh, that this is being brought to the community. So as always, make sure to let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. I always enjoy reading them, even if I don't get a chance to respond to all of them. But And don't forget to hit the like button if you got any value out of today's content, man. I love you guys, appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the next video. He ran me over.